We are going to work on page 157. So it's titled, An Amazing Day. Before we get into the workbook page, we're going to read through Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 34. Okay, so I went to Acts, big 16, little 16. Once when we were gone... Oops, excuse me, I lost my place. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, she, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hopes of making money, their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or to practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cells and fastened their feet to the stocks, or in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. The foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prisoner doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He, was then, brought, he then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the words of the Lord to him and all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. They immediately, Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into the house to set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the orders, release those men. The jailer told, the mag told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you may leave, go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now, do they want to get rid of us quietly? No! Let them come, let them come themselves, excuse me, let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appear, appease them and escort them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and encouraged them. Then they left. Okay, so that had a lot going on in it. First of all, we know that there was a slave girl who could tell the future. Well, and that Paul even commanded this spirit that was allowing the slave girl to come out of her so that she would be free. If 
Paul is commanding a spirit to come out of a girl in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of this girl. We know that that girl was possessed by a demon, which is really scary. And so by using Jesus' name, they got that demon out of the girl or that spirit out of the girl. And then her owners were really mad because she was making them a lot of money and now she doesn't have the ability to tell you what's going to happen in the future. And so they threw him into prison, got them in trouble and threw them into prison and had them beaten beforehand. Well then, while in prison, they're still praising God. They're still singing hymns to them. And God sends this earthquake through that opens up all the jail doors and then all the prisoners no longer have their chains on them so that alone is a miracle but yet all these prisoners are staying inside their cells they're not getting out and the jailer is so scared that he actually thinks about taking his own life which can't even imagine i can't even imagine that type of fear he must have and so i don't know uh paul says don't harm yourself we are all here so i don't know if he's scared about the repercussions of uh, or being reprimanded for losing all the prisoners or if he's scared of the prisoners coming out and attacking him that's somewhat unclear to me but either way he's scared and paul's saying don't be scared we're all here you're fine and so that act of I don't need to be scared. We're fine. Everybody's where they're supposed to be. Actually leads the jailer and his entire family to become Christians, which is just amazing. So getting into our page, I want you to read this story and then complete the letter. Why was it an amazing day? I mean, when we read it, it says, what a terrible horrible, frightening day I had yesterday. An angry mob beat up two guys named Paul and Silas. The magistrates had them beaten even more and ordered me to put them in jail. It doesn't make sense to me locking up the victims, but that's my job. It's a crummy job, but somebody's got to do it. So that right there would be hard, having a job that he even says it's a crummy job but I have to do it and so he's probably has some guilt for all the times he's locked up people who he didn't think needs to be locked up and then going on with his letter it says then about midnight these two guys who should have been moaning about their aches and pains being began singing so they should be in a lot of pain but yet they're still praising God which is amazing that they're they can be in this much pain and still know God's going to get me through this. They praised their God, but he didn't seem to be paying attention to them. At least that's what I thought. Then the earthquake struck. What else could go wrong? I soon found out all the prisoners' doors unlocked and all the chains fell off the prisoners. I figured I would be dead soon. Either prisoners would kill me or an angry crowd would come back to finish me off for letting the prisoners escape. Then, amazingly, the whole day changed from terrible and horrible to a great great and glorious. So talk about how it changed from great to glorious. So his part of the stories ends kind of where in our Bible reading it says that Paul shouts, Don't harm yourself, we're all here. You don't need to be afraid. So, think. That is verse 20. That's verse 30 that it ends. So, this paragraph right here from 31 to 34, what goes on there? It says, They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word, of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. At that hour of the 
night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and immediately he and his family were baptized. The jailer brought them to his house and set a meal before them, and he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, and he and his whole family had believed in God. So, how did that night become glorious? How did it become a God-pleasing moment? I want you guys to write that in the lines here. And then it says, your own baptism day is an amazing day that you can celebrate now or anticipate in the future. You have been chosen by God through his word or through his word and baptism. So what is your life like when you live as God's own chosen one? So when you were baptized, you were made part of God's family. So how does being part of God's family change you? Change you? How does it connect you with other believers in Christ? How does it make you different from those who don't believe? And then read together the Bible words to remember from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, which is right here. So put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. What does that verse mean for us? What does it mean to be holy and beloved, God's chosen ones, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience? Why does being a Christian, part of God's family, make us any different? 